what we're defending on the ZAD is with the movement of farmers, uh, locals, uh, activists, people from the ZAD, that when the airport was cancelled, we would run the land collectively as a common uh, view and assembly. And that was always the, the thing that we, we, back in 2015, decided we would do. The movement wrote a statement that was called the six points for the ZAD because there will be no airport. And one of the points there was that we would uh, together uh, run the land that we had saved from demolition to build the airport and that that, that land would be run as a commons via an assembly, an assembly of usages. Now that assembly has now been set up. It was set up before the victory against the airport was won. Uh, and we, in the negotiations, have sent uh, different members of that assembly. So there were people representing the farmers, the naturalists, uh, the, the people from the ZAD, um, the historic farmers, and so on. So all the different compositions of the movement. And we're saying, this is what we said we'd do. We want it as, as the commons and the state are saying, no, we're just going to do what we normally do. You know, this you know, this farmer will have these bits of land and this farmer will have these bits of land and you sign a, a, a an individual a contract for that land. Um, and we're saying, no, we want to sign a, a, a contract that puts all the land together. Negotiations were opened up with the state uh, uh, to try and negotiate that. And they said very clearly, no, you're not going to have it as a commons. It's going to be individual private property. So... <clears throat> Basically, the state said they would evict uh, targeted places, uh, which they started to do over the first two days. And today, it seems like everything changed. They attacked uh, a picnic, uh, a picnic to meet in the camp where uh, it's called the camp of the of the white haired ones. It's basically the elders' camp here. Uh, there was a huge picnic with probably several thousand people there, uh, loads of tractors from the, with the farmers, uh, and suddenly uh, they gassed uh, in one of the fields nearby when the samba band got too near to them, and they started to gas everyone and sent dozens of concussion grenades, and then from that moment onwards, they suddenly attacked the whole uh, another road and started taking places out next to that road, and it was a huge operation and really pissed people off. There were eight, there are 80 injuries and um, many uh, fairly uh, quite uh, serious. Most of them are from uh, concussion grenades. The same con kind of concussion grenades which killed a young 21-year-old um, Zadist in the south of France and on a ZAD in the south of France a few years back. Um, they're incredibly dangerous, they're incredibly loud. Uh, they've been throwing loads of them today. I mean, the whole, you couldn't hear birdsong half the time because of the explosions of concussion grenades. Um, the medic center had to be moved because it was being gassed. Uh, so the medic center has now been moved out of where it was. It's, in fact, it's moved twice today due to being gassed. Um, there have been cops seen with assault rifles. Those have come out a bit more often in France recently, um, but they're very rare. Um, everyone, you know, I, I'm I'm really quite scared about tomorrow uh, in terms of injuries, and we don't have access to the entire zone. Uh, the whole east is completely blocked off by the cops and very hard to get access to. But we think they've taken about 20 places, what they would call places. Um, so uh, what we always thought is they wouldn't take the farmhouses because the side is a mixture of farmhouses and cabins and yurts and caravans and so on. And many of the farmhouses were destroyed in 2012. So it's quite a rare thing to have the, these solid buildings. So far, they've only been taking the, the, the cabins. Um, for sure, the seeing as this is a battle of a you know a story battle, uh, the destruction of a nice stone farmhouse is, is much uh, more complicated for them than the destruction of a of a of a cabin. 
Um, today they they took less places because yesterday there was kind of a great victory where uh, we managed to push them back from uh, destroying uh, one of the sites that's quite near near the center of the zone. Today they took more territory than they ever had before. Um, they took the whole uh, south east uh, of the zone. They've only got to the center of the zone. The zone is huge. It's 4,000 acres. Uh, and there was a huge fight at the Solf, which is the kind of crossroads right at the center of the zone uh, this afternoon. <clears throat> uh, there are now barricades everywhere. Every single road pretty much is barricaded. You know, two weeks ago, we were still in, we were negotiating around the table uh, with the state. Um, they were, their, their whole thing is that, you know, we'll let people stay if they have an agri agricultural project and they're in the agricultural frame and they're legal, they're in legal agricultural project. Um, and we've been trying to say, well, you know, what, what the ZAD has also done is, is kind of re-energize the rural uh, space with way more than just agriculture with culture, uh, rap music, studios, uh, libraries, um, uh, you know, all different, you know, loads of uh, kind of trainings. And uh, so it's, it's way more than just simply agriculture. So the state's entire strategy since we won against the airport has been to divide the movement. They can't stand the movement, which is this rich web woven of compositions of, you know, farmers and, you know, legalists and direct action folk and, and uh, anarchists and local villagers and pensioners and unionists. I mean, incredible diverse movement. And of course they want to kill that movement. So they've been trying to divide us between those who are the legalists who want to negotiate with the government and those are the, who are the radicals, the 80 radicals that they keep talking about. Of course, this is a complete rubbish and fantasy. Uh, the movement decided to negotiate uh, to use that because we thought if we didn't, they would just come and destroy the entire zone. And because we'd always said we wanted to keep the land in common, uh, and that would be a victory after the airport. Um, so if there are these 80 radicals, you'd have thought they would arrest 80 radicals, <laughs> which they're not doing. Uh, it's extraordinary. Even people on rooftops have been taken down calmly and then just let go. Um, so there have been not many arrests. Uh, I haven't got the figures in front of me, but I think under 10 arrests uh, over, you know, for three days of pretty heavy rioting, that's not a lot. So, uh, the French police are changing, I, I think. This is just my perception, but I think they're becoming much more uh, Anglo-Saxon, much more like the English or the German model, uh, which means a lot of uh, information gathering. Uh, so way more cameras now than they had just a few years back. So one of our fears is they will uh, just use all that footage and all that data and then come and do arrests later. Tomorrow, who knows, we think it's going to be a paradigm shift because we think now the states really realize that, you know, the ZAD is the problem. <laughs> uh, the, you know, living life in common uh, is, is, is the problem. And before it was the prefect, the uh, kind of the head of the state in the local, in the department, in the region, who was trying to trying to uh, command this operation, and she wanted a very clean, simple, targeted uh, operation, and then go back to negotiations. It seems now that it's Macron and uh, the prime minister who have taken hold of it, and he's basically said, "We're going to go for it, and we're going to do it bit by bit, see what happens." But it seems like he's going to take the hard line. So we think this has shifted probably from being, at first this was a fight against an airport, against the climate killing, climate killing suicide machine of an airport. Then we won that struggle. And then it was about uh, how we keep uh, looking after this land because we saved it from concrete. So how do we look after it collectively with the whole movement? and uh, that's absolutely what they don't want. The ZAD is, is unique in Europe. You know, it's dozens of different living collectives uh, supported by a mass popular movement trying to live despite the state and capitalism, um, living you know, outside of the markets with 
all sorts of experiments in commoning and uh, te- you know, learning together, uh, running the forest together, uh, how, you know, how you uh, planting food together, uh, medical centers together, rap studios together, bakeries, uh, and so on. So it's an enormous laboratory of, 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 of commoning, of, of, of ways of living, uh, new forms of life despite the state and capital. Um, and of course, no government wants that. Uh, no government wants that, especially if it's near a city in one of the most radical regions of France. And they especially don't want that at a moment of crisis where right now, as I speak, uh, there are supermarket workers on strike. That's never happened in France before. There are the most some of the most radical unions in the uh, train workers who are striking, the airport workers are striking. Um, their students are occupying their universities against a new education law. Macron is pouring in these neoliberal laws uh, at a speed which is un- unbelievable. And so this is all starting to happen right now. And the ZAD has always made many links with the unions uh, as well, even the union that was the workers who were going to build the airport were actually against the airport. Um, and so the best we can hope for is that ZAD helps to become one of the sparks in some kind of uh, general uprising against Macron uh, and his neoliberal uh, craziness. So uh, I think that's one of the things we can really hope for. Uh, people are from all over France and all over Europe are on their way to the ZAD right now. Uh, the numbers, every every minute, the numbers are growing. Um, even up just here, look, solidarity coming in from the Diné, you know, the, uh, Palestine to Minneapolis to um, even in, in France, we've been, uh, people are occupying their town halls pretty much uh, uh, every night. So that's been incredible. Um, And I just wanted to thank everyone for that solidarity because it really means a lot to us when we're facing the tear gas and the grenades. And uh, they can't take our solidarity away, that's for sure.